Okay, so what we're going to do first is let the air out of the tire. What I like to remind everybody to remember, there could be tire sensors here or there could be a tire sensor here. Some Fords have them located 180 degrees across. So just be aware that there could be tire sensors in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this Schrader valve removal tool, put it in and lefty loosey or left takes it out and we let the air out. Make sure you keep control of the Schrader valve because if you don't, you'll lose it. Listen for the whistle. When you hear the whistle, that means you got about 10, 12 pounds left in the tire. And after that, if it whistles again, you're talking three to five pounds left. You're almost there ready to break it. So once we let the air out of the tire in this machine, while we're doing that, we're going to get a close-up of the type of machine we're going to be using. This is called a rim clamp. The reason we call it a rim clamp is because we have clamps that clamp here and clamp onto the rim. So you can see, once you throw the clamp on this way, it will clamp here. And then, if we want to, we can also do this. It's got an inverted clamp, or we can put the tire right there and clamp it right there. It's got a two-way way of squeezing the clamp. Usually for custom rims, I will take choose this option here. Okay, but for most other rims, especially steel rims, I'll choose the teeth option here. So with that moving forward, we know what we've got with this rim here. We're going to go ahead and start the tire removal process. And doing that, what we'll do is we'll start breaking the tire down by using the tire brake tool. Now you're going to see something very important. Now watching this, here's a problem. If I have this turned over here like this, where I've got these tubes right here, and I go to break the tire, which is where I'm going to break it here, you can see the damage I can cause to the tubes. I can actually break these fittings right here, this fitting here and this fitting here. Another way you could break these fittings, I want to make you very aware of it, is this way. I'll show you. Here's another way of breaking it. You can have your tire here like this, and this fitting can come out and run right into the tire if your tire is wedged in there. I'll show you how that works later. Just be advised that this should be retracted and this should be turned around into this position before you break the tire. Next, usually, not always, but most of the time, the outside of the tire is pointing outside towards or I mean away from the tire machine. What I'll do is roll the tire in to these rubber pads that protect the rims. Now I'll roll these in here and I'll take the tire spoon, tire spade, right here. This is called the roll and control portion of the tire breakdown. So I'm going to roll it in and control it here. My right hand stays on this tire spade. The left hand stays on the tire so I can roll it and I can control it and control the brake. All right, with that in mind, I'm going to go to this third pedal right over here, or second pedal from the right. It's this pedal right here, so there's one, there's two. The second pedal is the brake pedal. That's number two from the right to the left. Moving that way, I'm going to push down, roll and control. I'm going to hold it here and basically brake the tire. Now keep in mind, this tire has been broken so many, so many times, it wants to just jump off the rim. Most of the time, you're going to have to break a tire in two or three different spots just to get it to let go. So I'm going to do that just to show you that you've got to break the tire. Now, generally, I'm going to lube up the tire so it doesn't stick. I don't want the tire, if I break it on the other side, to stick here. So I'm going to go ahead and lube this side, but you can see my brush is too big to get in here. So what I'm going to do, I'll just flip it up on here like this drop it down, put it on the machine and letting the machine do all the work. This way I can get that bead lubricated and I don't have to worry about muscling the tire up too bad. Now that I've got that, let the machine do a lot of the work for you. Now there's no chance for this tire to stick to the rim right here. I'm going to flip it around. Now I'm going to roll and control right in here. Got my spade in position, second pedal from the right. Going to control it. Break the bead. And I've got the bead broken. It's 
It's been broken so many times on this tire again. This is a tire that wants to practically jump off the rim. It's been broken so many times. Okay, normally I would take this and lay it down like that. And I would step on it to make sure it's completely broke. And if I needed to lubricate it, I'd go ahead and I would step on it and lubricate it. And then you can, you can see, you get the idea, you're not getting your hands all dirty. And you can kind of see how easy it is to kind of get that lubricated. I'm not going to do the whole tire. Now that I've got the tire broken, it's removed from the bead, or actually it's broken away from the bead. These teeth here are going to grab onto the inner part of this rim. So let's go ahead and throw this on. But be nice to your tire machine. What I like to do is I'll turn this over and put it on gently. Go ahead, lock it down right here. Now I'm ready to take it off. Next comes the duck head. So I'll have uh, the, the camera come over here and we're going to film right down here on the duck head. This is the duck head. This is the bill. This is the duck. Okay. Goes down on the rim and locks in right here where this handle's at. Okay, now that we've got that locked in, we need to adjust it this way. I have this nut right here. So I'm going to adjust it, see how that works. Now that I've got that adjusted to where about where I want it, to where barely, barely touching the rim, I'm going to grab my tire tool or my tire iron. This part bends away from the uh, duck bill. I stab and grab, okay? So what I'm typically going to do is I'm going to grab or stab or stab and grab. I'm going to grab, stab, and bring this tire up over the duck head. So grab, stab, and bring it right up over there, okay? Next, I'm going to hold down with my left hand, and then I'm going to rotate. Now, at this point in time, this is the time that you might decide, hey, getting kind of dry right in here, I'm going to add a little bit more of the tire lubrication. So now that that's ready to slide with, with a lot of tire soap, we're going to go ahead and pull this right off the rim. That's step one. Now again, if you have a tire sensor, I would like to remind you the sensor should be right underneath the duck head like we did last time. Next is the grab and stab. I go ahead and make sure my tire my tire flare is out this way, and then I grab, stab, and now we're going to film underneath. So I'm going to grab it, stab it, and bring it up. Now, when it's filmed underneath, I'm going to go ahead and rotate. I want to lift this way to pull the tire off the rim. So here I go. I'm lifting, 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 and the tire comes off the rim at this point. Now don't let this go yet. Put the tire tool back. Hold on to the tire. Then, when you got control of this tire, lift this open, move this off to the side, and remove the tire, keeping control of the tire. Now I'm going to remount the tire. To remount it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lubricate the tire. I want to mention, during the lubrication process, clean the rim. Always make sure that the rims are dry, clean, this will cause the tire, the rim to rust if you don't keep it cleaned off. I like to get all the dirt off the sidewall and start over fresh with new tire soap. See how sloppy this could get dirt in here. I don't know what's in here. So I'm going to go ahead and start over fresh. And now I'm going to lubricate the bead and the bead face right here. And that's not a big deal. All I got to do is do it like this. Lubricate the bead, the bead face right here get the bead face let the machine do all the work for you turn the tire around lubricate the bead lubricate the bead face now for you those of you who are stronger you can actually put the inner part of the tire on without using the machine let me show you all you got to do is walk the tire on it's push 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 it takes this one takes a little bit but you can see how easy it is you can pop the tire on by hand I prefer to do that because it's faster, but if you can't do it, you've always got the duck head. The duck head is always there for both the inner and outer part of the tire to put it onto the rim. This is the hard part.
The real hard part is getting this tire, this bead into the center section here. To do that, most people have the hardest time of their lives to get this to twist in. It's called slice and dice. We're gonna slice it here and dice it right below the duck head and spin this bead into the center section of the rim right in here. So slice and dice takes your hips, pushing down on your left hand, pulling up on your right hand and using your hip to throw that bead into the center section and it stays itself, watch. So here I go, slide it down. Duck head is still visible and I still got the shoe back here intact and it almost stays there by itself. See how if we film right in here, we've got the bead dropped right into the center section. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it on so we're going to stand back over here and film this way and we're going to watch this go on. Generally you're going to have your left hand here pushing this on like this and your tire gets plopped right on, okay? Now that your tire's on, you got the most dangerous part ahead of you, okay? The most dangerous part ahead of you is setting the bead. Now I want to talk to you about setting the bead. Setting the bead, you have two ways of doing it. You can use the cheetah down there, we'll talk about that another day, or you can use the bead setter. Now here it is. This one here, Pedal one position is this. And all that does is fill up the tire. You can see it right here. It's got a clamp and it clamps on right there to fill the tire up. If it won't, the tire won't take air, you can always set the bead with a harder push. It explodes air up into the rim and it explodes that tire into place. Okay? So, now comes the safety part of our lesson today. What you don't do, what I never want to see you do, is put your thumbs inside the bead or your fingers inside the bead like this, okay, like that, while you're setting the bead. Because if you do, and you can see, the, oh, it sets. And you can see what can happen to your hand. You do not want your hand in that bead section, okay? That would be very, very bad. So that's a safety tip right there that I wanna let you know. So how do we, God forbid, get your thumbs out of there? Well, we'll have to unplug it here. Now we'll have to take the helper arm, which is this guy right here, bring the helper arm over and hope that the helper arm can save us. Because, oh my gosh, you got your thumbs in there. What do I do? Maybe if you're lucky, and you got all the air out of this someday, we can use the helper arm to get our hand out, okay? But that's if you're lucky. But I want to go over this again with you, but right now, that is the essence of a rim clamp tire machine. We'll get into the helper arm in a minute, but I want to show you guys how all this works. Now that we kind of know what's going on, I want to talk about the helper arm, and I want to show you how to get these hard tires to come off the rim if they're stubborn. So what I'm going to do now is break the bead again. I'm going to pull this top off, and then I'm going to use this device right here to help me get the tire off the rim. It, let's say it's a great big fat rim, and I got a, a mud swamper tire. I won't be able to show you very well on this tire because it's kind of slow or low on the profile, but the mud swamper tire here, or this helper disc right here for the mud swamper tires is what we need to actually help lift the tire off the rim. So here we go. First off, I'm going to release it. Let's go over this again. No tire sensor in there, so I'm not worried about it. Got the air out of it. Roll in control. Slide the bead in there. Push that down. Break the bead. We know it's broken pretty good. Flip it around. Remember, this has been broken a million times, so it looks easy. Believe me, it's not that easy. Break the bead here. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and throw this on the rim clamp. We've got it all looped up, sort of. Go ahead and rim clamp this thing down. Then we get the duck head. The duck head, we'll show that in a minute. We'll load that up there. Grab our tire tool. Grab and stab, bring that over here. Grab the tire and lift it off. 
Now that we've got that, we grab and stab. Back on the duck bill, grab it here. And oh my gosh, it won't come off. There's a problem. Well, it will. But let's say make believe there's a problem. So, we use this disc over here. Now, this disc is kind of cool. Because what we can do with this disc is this. I can bring this disc down and I can put it in here like this and I can lift it up. And as I lift it up, I've got control of this. I can actually use this disc to help me pull that tire off. And as you can see right there, that disc is, is very instrumental. Can you see all that? How that can help lift the tire off the rim? So that's what that's all about. That's what, and you've got a handle there to add a lot of pressure. Okay? So let's go over this again. We got the disc to help left off, lift off the tire. It's a helper. We have the helper arm. And now I want to show you one more thing on this helper arm that's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and reattach the tire. Watch this. The helper arm is really nice. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show those who have not had a chance to see this. A lot of people that don't have the strength will need to know how to get this on. Just slice and dice. And you can see, boom, the tire goes on. Now, let's say I want to get this tire on, but I'm having a hard time keeping it into the center section. Let me see if I can do this. Make believe. So now i got this helper arm. Here we go. Let's say this keeps popping out. So all i got to do now is take my helper arm and be very careful how I use it so it doesn't interfere with anything. Move my disc out of the way. Now, push down here. Make sure this disc doesn't hit this table. Keep those discs clear. Bring this right down there like that. Does everybody see that? Now watch this and film this carefully. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead. Can everybody see this? Here we go. Watch the helper arm. Oops, I got to help the arm. See how that arm followed everything around? It's really nice to have a helper arm. So, get that back up here. Now I can take the helper arm off. But now here's the problem, folks. Don't take this helper arm and crash it into here. Because if you take the helper arm and crash it into here, you, bust, you broke your machine. So you're going to be mindful about what you're doing at all times. All the time. Again, I hope you all can see the duck head on this. See the duck head? That's why we call it the duck head. And today, that is our rim clamp lesson for today. Again, I'm going to take this off after I fill it full of air. I'm going to go ahead and fill it full of air with the Schrader valve removed. Why? Because it accepts air faster. And if there's a problem and the rim's going to blow up, something's going to blow up, the rim's going to let go, the tire's going to blow up, I can disconnect the air and walk away and it's going to get safer. If there's a Schrader valve in there, it's not only going to accept air slower, but if I have to get rid of it, the air, and make it safer, it's not going to happen. I've got to stand back 50 feet and shoot at the tire. Or poke it with a lance 50 feet away. Or spear it or do something. And I don't want to do that. I just want to disconnect it right here and call it a day. So let's go ahead and fill this full of air. Okay, this one here fills up pretty good. Watch the bead. When the bead breaks, stand back. Always lean back a ways. Keep yourself clear of the tire when you're filling it up, okay? So now that we've got all that kind of done, I'm not going to put the Schrader valve in it. Well, let me go ahead and put it in. I'm going to hold that here. Just a second. Okay, righty tidy is the Schrader valve. Now, watch how tight I do this. When that stem starts to torque, you can see it torque a little bit, watch. You can just barely feel that thing seat. That's just go just tight enough to where you can feel a little bit of twist in that stem. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Once you feel that tiny movement of twist, that's tight enough for that valve stem. Does everybody get that? Okay, we're all done with this. Now we're going to go into some destruction. Okay, so let's move this out. I want to see how much 
This is going to, is this going to hurt this ram? What's going to happen? So, will this bend a ram? I don't know. It'll stand back. It could shoot out. I don't know. I'll try to. Here we go. I'm feeling some pretty good pressure on that ram. If I had this rim and a tire on it and I kept reefing on it, I think I could bend a steel rim. I could definitely break an aluminum rim. Just a little safety, safety thing. All right, I'd like to thank you all for coming to the Hippie Garage. Thanks for this rim clamp.